Welcome everyone to this series of lectures on prepositions. This is lecture number one in this series where we are going to discuss about the meaning of prepositions, the meaning of prepositional phrases and some insights into prepositions of place. Prepositions are words used to show a relationship in space or time, or a logical relationship between two or more people, places or things. Prepositions are most commonly followed by a noun phrase or a pronoun. The last time I saw him, he was walking on the road. I'll meet you in the cafe at the cinema. In both of these cases, on and at give us the relationship between the poor noun phrase that follows them to the, to the remaining part of the sentence before it. It was difficult to sleep during the flight. Similarly, during gives us the relationship between the noun phrase that follows it and the remaining part of the sentence before it. A preposition usually comes before a noun phrase. For example, into the building at two o'clock without a coat. In, in all of these phrases, we have a preposition into or at or without coming before a noun phrase. Some prepositions can also come before an adverb like until tomorrow through there at once we can also use some prepositions before a gerund for example we are thinking of moving house we cannot say like we are thinking of to move house but we are thinking of moving house so prepositions come before gerunds the preposition and its object form a prepositional phrase. So a prepositional phrase consists of two parts, a preposition and the noun phrase that follows it. For example, towards the setting sun behind you. Each of these cases, the prepositions are towards and behind, which are followed by the noun phrases the setting sun or you. The prepositional phrase functions as an adverbial. They walk towards the setting sun. On Saturday, there's going to be a disco. Sometimes the prepositional phrase comes after a noun. The disco on Saturday. Now, the prepositional phrase here is on Saturday and it comes after the noun, the disco. We can always modify a preposition. That means we can add more words before a preposition. For example, at the end can also be written as almost at the end. In front of me can be modified by right in front of me. Up the hill can be modified by halfway up the hill. Over the floor can be modified by all over the floor. Off the motorway can be modified by just off the motorway. In some clauses, a preposition comes at the end. There are not many sentences where we can use prepositions at the end of a sentence, but only in certain cases, like in a WH question, who did you go to the party with? Or sometimes infinitive clauses, like I've got a tape for you to listen to. Or in some passive forms, like war reporters sometimes get shot at. Or some relative clauses like that's the article I told you about but generally we do not write prepositions at the end of the sentence but only in some cases like listed here some prepositions can also act as adverbs for example I waited for Max outside the bank we haven't seen Julia since last summer there was no lift. We had to walk up the stairs. In all of these cases, outside, since and up are prepositions. But 
They can also be used as adverbs in some other sentences like Max went into the bank and I waited outside. We saw Julia last summer but we haven't seen her since. There was no lift, we had to walk up. Now we'll try to discuss some things on the prepositions of place. There are some people in the cafe. There are some people inside the cafe. The man is waiting outside the cafe. There's a television on the table. There's a photo on top of the television. There's a dog underneath the table. There's a picture over the door or there's a picture above the door. There's a small table under the window or there's a small table below the window. Here we have different types of prepositions of places like in, inside, outside, on, on top of, under, underneath, over, above, under, below. And all of these talk about the different locations or positions of the objects in the sentences. Observe these pictures and we can use, we can write about them or talk about them in such sentences. She's going up the steps and he's coming down the steps. The road goes through a tunnel. The car is going in the tunnel or into the tunnel. The lorry is coming out of the tunnel. She is taking the food off the trolley and putting it onto the shelves. Now, in these cases, we have prepositions up, down, through, into, out of, off, onto, all talking about some sort of movement of the things from one place to another. These are also other examples of prepositions of place. The bus is at the bus stop. It's going from the city center to the university. The lorry is traveling away from York and towards Hull. The man is sitting next to the woman or the man is sitting next by the woman or the man is sitting next beside the woman. The table is close to the door. The table is near the door. In these cases, we have different types of prepositions which where some are used to talk about position like at, to, uh, beside or near or close to or by or next whereas there are some other prepositions like from away from to or two words which talk about movement from one place to another look at these pictures and the sentences below the bus is in front of the car the lorry is behind the car the car is between the bus and the lorry the woman is walking along the pavement past the supermarket. The man is on the pavement opposite the bank. The bank is across the road. Now in all of these cases we have some prepositions talking about positions whereas some prepositions talking about movement. So here we have in front of, behind, between, opposite which talk about position, whereas we have along, across, or past, where the prepositions talk about movement. So, now look at these pictures. The president is standing among his bodyguards. They are all round him or they are all around him. There is a hill beyond the church. The man is leaning against the wall. Now, we use of of only with on top of, out of and in front of. But we cannot use of like behind of or inside of or off of. 
though sometimes we may use outside of. Two other prepositions of place are throughout and within. Of course, they are very formal and we use them in only formal context. The epidemic spread throughout the country or all over the country. That means to all parts of the country. Delivery is free within a 10 mile radius, which could mean inside a 10 mile radius. Beneath is rather literary where from the balloon we could see the top town far below us or far beneath us. Around and about mean in different directions or in different places. We are going to drive around the country visiting different places or about the country visiting different places. In both the cases, around and about can talk about different places or different directions. So up to now what we have observed is that there are many types of prepositions of place and most of them either talk about position or they talk about movement. Most prepositions of place say where something is or where it is going. For example, there was a barrier across the road. The boy ran across the road. Now in the first case, uh, across talks about the position of the barrier. Whereas in the second case, across talks about the movement of the boy. At usually expresses position and to expresses movement. We were at the cafe. At states the position. We went to the cafe. To talks about movement. As a general rule, in and on express position and into and on to express movement. We were sitting in the cafe. We, she stood on the balcony. Both in and on talk about position. We went into the cafe, she walked onto the balcony, into and onto express movement. Now, the most common prepositions of place are at, on, and in. For example, when you look at the first picture, it means she's at her desk. In the second picture, it's it is on the table. The third picture could be it is in the drawer. Now let's try to observe the differences between at, on and in with reference to place. At is one dimensional. That is, we use it when we see something as a point in space. The car was waiting at the lights. There's someone at the door. We also use at to talk about an event. We met at Dave's party, didn't we? We use at plus building when we are talking about the normal purpose of the building. Like the Browns are at the theater. That means they could be watching a play. I bought these dishes at the supermarket. Nick is 15. She is still at school. So supermarket, school and theater. Uh, we are using them here to talk about the normal purpose of that building. We also use it for a person's house or flat. I had a cup of coffee at Angela's, which could mean at Angela's house or Angela's flat. Now, on is two-dimensional. That means we generally use on to talk about a surface. Don't leave your glass on the floor. There were lots of pictures on the walls. So, floor and walls are like two-dimensional surfaces. We also use on to talk about something on a line, like Paris is on the river sign. The house is right on the main road, so it's a bit noisy or in the line of the main road. We also use on in a special sense to talk about something like, I haven't got any money on me at the moment, or which could mean with me at the moment. In contrast to at and in, uh, at and on, in is three-dimensional in nature. We use it when we see something as all around. I had five pounds in my pocket. Who's that man in the green sweater? There was a man sitting in the waiting room. 
so in all of these instances we are talking about something all around or something in a three dimensional manner now let's look at in and at in comparison to buildings it was called in the library that means inside the building we were at the library that means we were near the library or we were doing something like choosing a book in general we use in for a country or town and at for smaller places but we can use at with a town if you see it as a point on a journey for example you have to change trains at birmingham where birmingham is like a point on a journey we can use in for smaller places also if we see it as a three dimensional place like i have lived in the village all my life in the village the village could be a smaller place it means three dimensional in nature Now let's try to understand the big differences between on, in and at with these examples. So at can be used in instances like at 52 Grove Road addresses, at your house, at the station, at home, at work, at school, at the seaside, at the back of a queue or at the end of a queue. On can be used in situations like on 42nd Street, names of streets on the third floor, on the platform, on the page, on the screen, on the island, on the beach or on the coast, on the right or on the left or on the back of an envelope. In can be used to talk about bigger places like names of countries or towns in Spain, in Bristol, in Grove Road, in the lesson, in a book, in a newspaper, in the photo, in the picture, in the country, in the middle, in the back of a car, in the front of a car, in a queue, or in a line, or in a row. Now let's move over to other prepositions of place, above and over. Above and over have similar meanings. There was a clock above the entrance, or we can also say there was a clock over the entrance. We do not normally use above to mean horizontal movement. The plane flew low over the houses, but we cannot say the plane flew low above the houses. So if you are talking about horizontal movement, it is generally better to use over. And we do not use above for an area or surface. For example, thick black smoke hangs over the town. We don't say above the town because it's like an area. Someone had spread a sheet over the body. It's not about the body. So on a surface or for an area, we generally use over. For horizontal movement too, we use over rather than above. We also use over for movement to the other side or position on the other side of a line. The horse jumped over the wall. Was the ball over the goal line? someone we had to get over the river so here we are talking about movement to the other side or some position on the other side of a line so we don't really generally don't use above but we use over in such cases below and under below is the opposite of above and under is the opposite of over we met at the entrance below the clock or under the clock but we do not normally use below for a horizontal movement or for an area or for a surface just like above. Mike crawled under the bed in an attempt to hide. The town lies under a thick black cloud of smoke but not below. Top and bottom. On top of is a preposition. There is a monument on top of the hill. We can also use top and bottom as nouns in phrases like there's a monument at the top of the hill the ship sank to the bottom of the sea now let's try to understand the differences between uh, in the uses of uh, through across and along 
through is three dimensional in nature you go through a tunnel through a doorway through a crowd of people the water flows through the pipe i look through the telescope across is two dimensional in nature when you say you go from one side of one side to the other across a surface or such a lawn across a lawn or across a playground across a line such as a river across a river or across a frontier so it's like two dimensional you cannot get across the channel by ferry sometimes we can use either through or across depending on whether we see something as having three dimensions or two dimensions we walk through the field when we are talking about three dimensional nature we walked across the field when we are just talking about a surface we use along when we follow a line you go along a path along the road along a passage along the route and so on for example we say we cruised along the canal for a few miles we walked across the canal by a footbridge then let's also try to understand the differences between two towards or up to we use to for a destination and towards for a direction so to is a destination towards is direction we are going to doncaster my aunt lives there we are going towards doncaster now you must have taken a wrong turning near close and by near or near to and close to mean not far from motherwell is the town motherwell is near glasgow <coughs> not by glasgow we live near the hospital or we, ne- we live close to the hospital near or close to have comparative and superlative forms like you live nearer to the hospital than we do i was sitting closest to the door nearby means not far away there's a post office near by next to means directly at the side of we live next to the fish and chop chip shop at dinner i sat next to mrs armstrong that means directly at the side of now let's try to understand how we use in front of before behind after and opposite when we talk about something is where something is we prefer in front of and behind rather than before and after so in 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 case of positions we use in front of and behind there's a statue in front of the museum we cannot say before the museum but its position so in front of the police held their right shields in front of them the car behind us ran back into the back of us it's not after us but behind us the position before usually means earlier in time and after means later in time so but sometimes we also use before and after to talk about the order of things come like j comes before k k comes after j we also use after to talk about someone following or chasing like the thief ran across the road with a policeman after him opposite means to the other side from on the other side from so let's try to understand this when we talk about in front of and opposite people were standing in front of the theater waiting to go in now this is the position people were standing opposite the theater waiting to cross the road so it means from the on the other side from gerald was waiting in front of me in the queue gerald was sitting opposite me at lunch so in front of me and in front of the theater we talk about the position but when we are talking of opposite the theater or opposite me we are saying that on the other side now finally let's try to understand the difference between between and among we use between with a small number of items that we see as separate and individual like the ball went between the player's legs 
Tom lives somewhere in that area between the hospital, the university and the bypass. Among generally suggests a larger number. I was hoping to spot Marsha among the crowd. Now in this video we have been trying to understand the different types of prepositions which we generally use to talk about position and movement. In the next video we'll talk about prepositions which talk about time. If you have any queries please approach us at our blog spot or email id or mail id. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.